Well, by the grace of God, it's been almost 66 years since I put my trust in the Lord Jesus. I was just a little child, but uh, 66 years is long enough to prove it. It's the real thing. And the verse that God used to explain to my little mind the clear way of salvation was John 3 and verse 36. And it has two parts to it. And the first part says, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. And the second part says, And he who does not believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. I was very concerned about where I was headed as a little child. I'd heard about heaven and hell, and I knew I wasn't saved. And when my father found me, I was weeping, and I was pointing downward like I, I knew where I was headed. And my father read this verse to me, and he explained that, that the Lord was there with a gift in one hand and a judge's gavel in the other. And I had to make a choice. Did I want him to be my savior or my judge? If I wanted him to be my savior, all I had to do was receive the gift of eternal life by faith. And if not, then he would be my judge. A gift or a gavel, that was my choice. And so it was very a very moving thing to me to realize how important it was to put my faith in the savior. And by his grace, he saved me as just a little boy. Well, as we move along in life, we come to realize that everybody has to make that decision. And some make it for part one and some make it for part two. And I'll never forget the first series of gospel meetings that we had with a team of young men. Many years ago, we went to North Dakota and we traveled across the state, Fargo and Grand Forks and little towns like Pekin and Tolna and Valley City and Hertzfield and Harvey and out to Washburn. And we traveled right across the state preaching the gospel, going door to door and talking with people and uh, doing evangelism. And I remember we came to Valley City and uh, I had a tremendous battle uh, the night before I was to preach. I could feel the evil in the room and uh, my body was just wet with sweat as I felt the spiritual wrestling that was going on. And I lay claim to the scripture that says, the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runs into it and is safe. And so as I lay in my bed, I began to quote, starting with the letter A, he is my advocate. And I thanked God that Christ was presently, though I was sleepy, he was wide awake. He was at the presence of God and he was my advocate. He was speaking for me. And then B, he was my beloved, that I was dear to him and he held me close because of this. And C, he was the comforter, not just comforting and sorrow, but fortifying me, strengthening me. And my defender, he was, he was my shield of protection against the enemy and, and my encourager and so on. And I went through the alphabet. I finally fell asleep somewhere around S or T. I don't remember what it was. But the next night when I preached the gospel, there was a young lady there. And I'll never forget, as we were sitting talking, she really wanted to get saved. It was obvious. And yet there seemed to be a wall in the way and she just couldn't get through. And finally I said, look, we need to stop and ask God for help. And so I prayed and I said, Lord, please break away the bonds, take the scales from her eyes. Uh, may she be open to trusting the Savior. We pray that whatever's impeding her, that you'll drive back the enemy. And this is the idea that's found in the scripture when it talks about the strong man arm keeps his palace and his goods are in peace. It's a false peace. It's the fool's paradise, but they're enslaved by him. And we need the stronger than the strong man to come and to take away his armor, to break these people free so they can make choices for the Savior. 
and it was so wonderful to see just within a moment uh, the light dawned on her face and she put her trust in the Savior. And uh, thanks, thanks to the Lord to this day, she's been going on for him. I just had a note from her at my 70th birthday and uh, we just rejoice at what the Lord did that night. But the next night, after another night of wrestling with the enemy, I came to the meeting and again preached the gospel. I felt real liberty. There was a woman there who came and she listened very carefully to what was said. And then she asked to speak with me. I went over the gospel with her again. And I'll never forget the moment when she looked me straight in the face and she said, well, I think you're probably right, but I'm just a rebel and I won't submit. And with that, she pushed herself back. I can still see it. Pushed herself back from the table and she got up and she walked out into the night. He who believes on the Son has everlasting life. At that moment, that dear young woman, she passed from death into life from darkness into light. You could see it on her face. And that dear woman chose part two. He who does not believe. It doesn't say they can't believe. It says they don't believe. It's a conscious choice to reject what you know to be true. Because the Spirit of God convinces people of sin and righteousness and judgment. And in the face of that convincing of God, the Spirit himself, they open the door, they kick the Lord out, and they slam the door behind them and say, goodbye, God, I don't want you. He who does not believe the Son. And notice it's not talking about believing the preacher. It's not about even believing the information, believing the gospel. It's believing the Son. It's the Lord Jesus who pleads with people. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life. But listen, the wrath of God abides on him. When that woman got up and walked out the door, though she could not see it, the wrath of God was already hanging over her head. And it was only the slender thread of God's grace that was holding back his judgment. I pray that the woman did get saved. I don't know if she did. But I tell you this, these are consequential choices. And people face them every day. We need to pray for people who are in the balance, who are searching, that they might have courage to step into the light, that they might have clarity in their thinking, that the enemy might be bound and kept away from them so that they could be free to choose and receive the Lord Jesus as their Savior. So just a little reminder, I thank God for the day he saved this little sinner and put me on the path to glory. And he's looked after me all these years. He's never failed in a thing that he's promised. I raise my Ebenezer and I say the Lord has helped me every step of the way. <laughs>